Hey, 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 everybody, the time to engage has come. I'm going to analyze every emblem ring in Fire Emblem Engage. We'll discuss what benefits they provide, how good those benefits are, and of course, what characters can utilize them in the most effective and fun ways, regardless of whether you're new to Engage and whether you're playing on normal, hard, or maddening mode. Of course, this analysis will be free of spoilers. I hope you're ready for our boy, because today's emblem is none other than the emblem of binding, Roy. If you've played his game of origin, the Binding Blade, you might expect Roy to turn your unit into an underpowered, red-haired version of Marth that promotes when the game is almost over. But fortunately, the developers didn't look too close at their source material when designing Roy's abilities. We'll kick off with Roy's Sync skills. These are abilities that you will get from having Roy on your units even when not engaged, and they can be passed on to other units as well through skill inheritance. Unlike the original Roy, we start off strong with Holdout at level 1. As long as your unit has 30% or more HP remaining at the start of combat, they will always survive that entire round with at least 1 HP, like a guaranteed miracle activation. As your bond level increases, you will gain access to improved versions of Holdout at levels 8, 13, and 18, each of which lowers the HP threshold at which Holdout can activate. Even if you've never utilized this skill yourself, you probably know how annoying it is when an enemy has it, and it should be no surprise that this skill has great potential on player units as well. You can just passively utilize it as a general safety net, but Holdout is at its most powerful when you're able to keep yourself at high HP during battle. This can be accomplished through inheriting Holdout on another unit, and then giving them the Makaya Ring for Nasuratu, as I've discussed in the last video, or if you have the DLC, it also synergizes well with Soren's Flare. Roy's other sync skill is Advanced at level 3. This one is very straightforward. If you're two spaces away from an enemy, you can select Advanced to move an extra space forward and then attack at one range instead. This is a nice bonus for Roy users if they're just a little short on movement to reach their opponents, especially since the strongest physical weapons are usually one range only. There probably isn't much of a reason to inherit it though. The reason I'm emphasizing physical weapons is because of Roy's stat bonuses. As you can see, he is geared up for close combat with a focus on HP, strength, and resistance. The idea behind the Roy emblem is clearly to make a unit that is capable of taking hits as well as dishing them out. This becomes even more clear as we take a look at what happens when we engage with Roy. Roy's engaged skill is Rise Above, which grants a temporary 5 extra levels to your units for as long as they are engaged. These are calculated as if your unit engaging with Roy is leveling up 5 times, rounded to the nearest integer. You can see how many points a unit gets in a stat in this table. Between Roy's stat bonuses and Rise Above, Roy can significantly improve a unit's durability and physical offense, and reach one running thresholds that they're normally short on. Depending on your unit's subclass, they might get a little extra bonus as well, though none of these are very flashy. In terms of engaged weapons, the first one Roy has got is the Lance Reaver, a sword that reverses the weapon triangle and thus enables Roy users to break enemy lances at the cost of getting broken by enemy axe units. This weapon can be alright to avoid counterattacks in the early game chapters, but with 9 might it's just not strong enough to do anything substantial beyond that. It ties with a plain old steel sword, to give you an idea. The Worm Slayer isn't much stronger at 10 might, though at least it's tripled against dragon enemies. Unfortunately, this does not apply to the many corrupted worms this game throws at you, so it only works against wyvern riders and quote unquote regular worms, so once again we're looking at a situationally useful weapon at best. Finally, at level 15, we have Roy's iconic Binding Blade in all of its fiery glory. Well, except for the effectiveness against dragons, probably because that is on the Worm Slayer already. This weapon complements Roy's kit really well. It is strong, light, accurate, it grants 1 to range, and it further increases your unit's durability with a plus 5 bonus to both defense and resistance. With this equipped, you can throw a strong unit into a group of enemies, and combined with some good base stats and the bonus from Rise Above, come out on top. Roy's engage attack, Blazing Lion, brings something different to the table. It targets the three spaces in front of your unit with a single attack, and then sets those squares and two rows behind them on fire. When I first saw this, I thought it was really cool and interesting, but to be honest, I've almost never managed to make great use of this attack. That's not because of the fire effects, you might know that Korin's ability to set things on fire is really useful, but Blazing Lion is much less flexible in practice. You need Roy to be engaged, you need an enemy next to you, and the area of effect is just not quite what it needs to be. That said, you can expand the attack area with a dragon unit or the flame area with a mystical unit. To gain access to bond levels beyond 10, you'll have to beat Roy's Divine Paralogue. 
If you've been following this series, then you might know that I've been recommending to always play paralogs, even if you don't feel like going through them normally, because they're quite easy to just cheese and beat quickly. Roy's paralog is a little different. It's based on chapter 21 from FE6, and even though it's been scaled down a bit, it's still a late game FE6 map with a ton of enemies. Fittingly, in both Engage and FE6, this can be the chapter where you unlock the Binding Blade. But if you don't think you'll need it, or any of Roy's other high-level benefits, you could choose to skip it instead. I've already touched upon Roy's inheritance options when talking about Holdout and Advance, but he has two other inheritable skills, Strength Plus and Sword Power. Both of these cost a lot of SP, but they can massively increase your damage output. Strength Plus is just a simple exchange of 1000 SP for every point of strength you want out of it. Sword Power only works for, well, sword users, but it grants plus 2 attack per 1000 SP. Sword Power also gives you minus 10 avoid regardless of level, but that is hardly a drawback worth mentioning when it adds so much extra damage. So if you're a sword user and you have extra SP to spare, you always want Sword Power. But if you're not a sword user, then Strength Plus might be worth. Of course, magical units like Griffin Knights and Mage Knights can also take advantage of Sword Power by using the Leaven Sword. These skills were generally too costly for most units to use when Engage first came out. However, since the Ancient Well was added, SP is more attainable. If you regularly dump 3 or 4 stars worth of items between chapters, you will get plenty of SP books, and you should be able to afford some of these expensive skills to boost the unit's power should you want to. Do note that it's not the only damage boosting skill of its kind. Gentility and Bravery from Eric and Ephraim also exist. Bravery boosts your damage by 3, while Gentility decreases your damage taken by 3, and it only costs 2000 SP to inherit. However, you can only benefit from one of those at a time due to how the Erika emblem works, so it might not always be better than Roy's power boosts. Roy's Engrave is very interesting. The Binding Engrave gives a weapon 2 might, which is more than any other non-DLC Engrave besides Ike, but at the horrendous cost of plus 8 weight and minus 30 avoid. This can severely compromise a unit's ability to double or dodge anything, unless they have enough speed and build to handle the weight, so make sure to double check that if you plan to do enemy face with this weapon, or you might get yourself doubled and killed. However, the higher might does make this engrave excellent for certain player face focused weaponry. You can put it on a longbow to get a free plus 2 damage, since you're never getting countered, and that plus 2 damage becomes 6 against flyers. If you're using the S rank O1 ring, you'll get plus 4 damage out of your dire thunder. Just make sure to keep the unit in question out of enemy range, or use the trait command to swap them to a lighter weapon after attacking. Now let's get into some good builds. Which units use Roy the best? As shown, Roy seems to work best with a physical unit that wants to increase their bulk and raw damage, hopefully to the point where they can survive an enemy phase and KO all enemies that go for them. Roy's stat bonuses and rise above will help with that, but they won't turn a fragile unit into a tank. He does add a lot of strength though, so we're looking for units that can benefit from that. For me, on my first playthrough on hard, that unit was Marin. As a wolf knight, she is fast enough to double, she's able to take several hits, but not infinite, but she does tend to be a little shy of one running with forged daggers. Roy can easily push her over the top, giving her up to 8 points of extra damage per hit. Generally, I like dagger units for Roy because they tend to come with some traits to fight on enemy phase already, such as innate one to range, as well as above average speed and avoid. And if you're using a wolf knight with Roy, or any other cavalry class, they will get plus one move when engaged, which is neat. Amber gets the same benefit if you keep him in a mounted class, and on top of that, he's also got massive natural strength, to the point where Roy might just give him enough power to one-shot enemies. This is rare for units in Engage, but depending on the difficulty and the enemy type, Amber might be able to pull it off. And as much as I hate to say it, that's kind of it when it comes to builds. Not because Roy is bad, that strength bonus he gives can be massive, but because he's not very deep. There's no interesting combos to explore here, Roy is mostly just a portable stat boost. Roy's emblem embodies the core ideas of Brodia. Don't worry about any big brain ideas, just pump up your stats and fight as hard as you can. This idea kinda works, but only if your unit is already halfway capable of doing that in the first place. In that case, Roy will probably do his job and turn your unit into a proper enemy phase juggernaut. Usually, emblems are capable of doing much more than that, but all of Roy's toolbox seems to be either in service of that one purpose, or it's trying to do something else that just doesn't work. He is usually one of the emblems I assign last, because the other ones have exciting combos and specific plans I can execute. Roy is more of a filler emblem, 
You put him on someone because most of the time, he is a much, much better version of a strength boost in Bond Ring. He's worth using when he's available, but when he's not, I can't say he's the one I miss the most. Maybe I'm wrong though, maybe there's this super big thing about him that I'm missing. In which case, please let me know in the comments who you used with Roy. And if you really like sharing your thoughts on the emblems, maybe you would like to stop by my Discord server. I regularly share my scripts for these videos, and I let other people bring in their own clever ideas to make them better. These are the people that contributed to this one. Thank you all so much for your help so far. You know what else makes these videos better? My Patrons on Patreon. They give me a stable income every month, so I can spend my time writing the scripts. Thank you guys, it means a lot. They also give me the support I need to pay Athena, who's been doing a wonderful job editing the videos. But I can't forget to thank one last person, and that is you, for watching.